Hello and welcome. You're watching Big Picture with me, Vishal Dahiya. And today we're going to talk about the road ahead for the 5G technology in India. In fact, the process of conducting 5G trials in India have begun and the telecom service providers for conducting these trials have been specifically asked to do it in rural and semi-urban areas. Now, 5G technology expected to is expected to deliver greater spectrum efficiency as well. And there are interesting developments which are taking place uh, uh, in the industry as well. Bharti Airtel has uh, joined forces with Tata Group uh, to develop the 5G network. On the other hand, Geo uh, has also tied up with Google Cloud for its 5G solution. So a lot of uh, work happening there as far as uh, the 5G technology is concerned. We'll try and understand all aspects of it and see uh, where do we stand today and where are we headed and how much time it might take uh, for us to realize this goal of uh, putting 5G technology in uh, practical terms in place out there. And for more on this, we're joined by two distinguished experts today. Let me first introduce them to you, beginning with the retired Lieutenant General Dr. S.P. Kocha is with us. He is Director General of uh, the Cellular Operators Association of India. We're also joined by Dr. Mahesh Uppal, Telecom Consultant. Welcome, both of you gentlemen. Let me begin with you. Uh, General Kocha, and let's start by understanding not only a bit more about 5G technology, but also where do we stand in terms of, uh, you know, utilization of this technology? And as I was saying, you know, the trial seems to have begun, but how far? 5G technology, as you know, is quite different from earlier technologies. And this is going to usher in a new era in telecommunication. Uh, telecommunication has always been important. But uh, 5G is the first time when there will be uh, communication between machine to machine, and there will be so little latency and a huge amount of bandwidth and speed, which means uh, all machines can talk to each other at the same time, which means there will be a huge amount of sensor networks which will be joining it, which means a huge amount of people will be joining this network, bringing in new vistas, bringing in new challenges, of cybersecurity, everything becomes um, an attack vector. We have to look at it quite differently and not the way in which we have been looking at other telecom networks. But the mm -hmm. good part is this is give, this 5G technology is going to give a huge amount of boost to the economy of India because uh, machines and industries are going to get connected. Efficiencies will go up, production will go up, and which will uh, generate more revenue and hence the economy will go up. Uh, the, the rural and urban divide is going to get reduced. Uh, they will all be connected onto a network. They'll all be talking to each other as equals on digital highways, which so far was a dream, but it never happened. That will now start happening with 5G. And uh, we will have different flavors of 5G coming in uh, to suit the type of geographies, the type of businesses which deploy 5G. We okay. are also going to see, uh, uh, because of the scales which will come in, we are going to see uh, possibly a cost will get adjusted and may actually drop uh, once, once the maturity comes in. But when the maturity will come in is a moot question because at this point of time, uh, there aren't too many business cases uh, uh, around in the, in the entire world. And everyone is looking for business cases uh, which are in the offing and which will get developed because uh, 5G technology is the, is the first time when business verticals and technical verticals will sit together and then deploy. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, what was happening earlier was in, in telcos, uh, uh, planning rooms, they used to uh, you know, discuss among themselves, feel that there is a business case in this area and then deploy the network and then businesses used to come and ride on those networks. Okay. Not so in 5G. 5G, we will have to go organic right from the beginning. We will have to have businesses as well as technologists sitting together, as well as cyber experts sitting together, and then deploy them. That okay. is a huge amount of change that is going to happen. Okay, okay. So it looks like uh, there is a lot uh, to be expected uh, as far as 5G technology is concerned. Uh, let me also uh, bring in uh, Dr. Uppal here. Dr. Uppal, from your point of view, you know, the significance of uh, switching over to 5G technology. Yes, I think uh, broadly what uh, General Kocher has said is uh, very relevant and very important. I think what we are going to get is hitherto unexpected 
unexperienced speed, several hundred, uh, close to 100 times faster than what we see on 4G. We are going to see machine-to-machine -machine interaction or the so-called Internet of Things. Uh, in other words, till now we were talking about connectivity between humans or devices on humans. Now we're talking about connectivity between devices which may or may not dwell, quote-unquote, on humans. Similarly, we are also going to see the most extraordinarily low latency. <clears throat> the kind of latency human beings have is roughly about three milliseconds. This will go on uh, already to about a second, which allows a whole lot of things like driverless cars and a whole range of possibilities in telemedicine, telehealth, etc. Uh -huh. So that is huge. Now, uh, the... Uh, there are some places where I would have a slightly different emphasis from General Kocha, uh -huh. and that is that we must recognize that 4G to 5G is not like the, the journey from 3G to 4G. 4G is an, is an entirely new uh, kid on the block in the sense that it is not more of what we already had. It is now going to be a, a paradigm shift now, with that in mind, my sense is that we are not going to see pervasive networks for a long time. We mm -hmm. are going to see niche networks. And uh, in other words, like the point that General Kocher made, made towards the end, that, you know, uh, the telcos will have to work closely with users, i.e., for example, industry. So you might want a network close to where, let us say, the automobile industry uh, players are. You might want something where uh, a, a different kind of business, which can uh, say, let's say, a, medis uh, a medical business, which can make use of the kind of functionality that 5G offers. However, and this is where the difference comes, I think one thing that it will not do in the short term is bridge the digital divide. In mm -hmm. fact, my sense is, for exactly the reasons we discussed, it will actually increase it. In the short term, because there is going, I mean, as General Coach has mentioned, that the business case of 5G, even in urban areas, is still a question mark. And okay. to think that this business case would be readily available in rural areas or as easily available in rural as it is in urban areas is actually a very optimistic. So my sense okay. is that this is going to be a niche uh, service, unlike 3G, 4G, et cetera, which were pervasive, which are all national, uh, uh, a whole country, uh, countrywide deployment of those services. In 5G, we will not see. We will initially begin probably with islands of service and which slowly will get densified over a longer period based on business models. Okay, okay. General Kocha, would you agree with that part, uh, you know, as uh, Dr. Upal is saying that this might end up being a niche uh, uh, area of uh, uh, expertise or niche technology there? And, and specifically, you know, uh, earlier you were mentioning that the benefit, one of the major benefits will be to bridge that digital divide. But uh, Dr. Upal is saying that in the short term, that might not be easily possible. Ultimately, the focus has to be uh, benefit those who are sitting in uh, the rural areas or the semi-urban areas. Uh, that is where the benefits of technology uh, need to be pushed in. I think uh, uh, both uh, Dr. Opal and I are saying the same thing. Only thing the, he is saying for short term. Whenever a technology gets deployed, obviously it doesn't get universally deployed in the entire country. Right? And now what we are going to see happening is, if I may expand a little further, we are going to see uh, 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 5G being deployed on in a non-standalone manner on 4G, right? And within that also, it is going to be more dense in areas where there is more, there are the number of subscribers, be it machines or human beings, are more. Mm -hmm. It is going to be more dense. We are going to see uh, spectrums in the higher ranges. You're going to see short, uh, small cells being deployed there because here what we want is capacity and not so much of range. We will cover up the range by deploying more short uh, cells, in uh, small cells in areas where they are required. Mm -hmm. But in 
in in i would not discount the fact that in rural areas it is not required it will be required so that uh, it meshes in well with wherever there is uh, uh, requirement of 5g and wherever there is uh, requirement it cannot match up with the urban areas obviously because the industrialization is less industries are less so there we require more of range more of coverage and maybe not so much of bandwidth definitely we require more bandwidth than what we get in 4g but not as much as what 5g promises at the higher frequencies those higher frequencies will be deployed certainly in urban areas mm-hmm. at lower frequencies there uh, there will be deployment in in rural areas now when you look at this entire thing put together it becomes a full scale 5g network when it gets deployed and that is where where i'm saying the the, the uh, urban and the rural uh, divide as far as telecommunication is concerned gets reduced to a very okay. large extent okay but uh, i would like to compliment the government here that they have gone about the trials in a very uh, a very sound manner you see all the tsps have been told that the trials will be done in uh, urban area will be done in semi urban area it will be done in rural area it will be done in the lower frequency ranges it will be done in mid frequency ranges it will be done in higher frequency why are they doing this if they only had uh, the urban areas in mind they would have said do it in millimeter waves do it in 3.3 to 3.3 don't go to 700 because that does not give you the type of uh, uh, capacities uh, that, that are required in urban areas or by industry that is what is required in the rural area. the government has taken this in a very holistic manner and they have said that go across the country in all geographies that exist in mm-hmm. right out and find use cases for each territory with the independent of each now here is where 4g and 5g differ 4g was a vanilla flavor there were no versions of 4g here in 5g we can create words right <laughs> by by changing the spectrum we can play around with the capacity and reach and therefore uh, the clientele increases the coverage increases by putting in a non stand alone version you are actually in meshing it with 4g you are not saying that 4g has to be replaced for 5g you are actually uh, using 4g and 5g together mm-hmm. so this is a big change big leap uh, which has taken <laughs> taken place and government is fully involved in planning okay that okay is why they have said put this indeed it is a big leap and uh, you know that is is really really important aspect that is bridging the digital divide as you're pointing out uh, general coach the field trials uh, and the focus of field trials clearly indicate as to what are uh, uh, the 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 tangible uh, you know uh, targets achievable targets there in terms of its application uh, uh, dr uppal you know from your perspective if uh, we have to look at this specific area of of bridging that rural urban divide and ensuring that uh, the benefits of 5g technology are percolated as uh, equally rather to uh, the rural and semi urban areas as well what should be done and how should we move ahead are we on the right path right path right now well this is a a, a very good question uh, there are two aspects to this one of course is that as far as the 5g technology is concerned as general coacher also mentioned uh, it can be deployed at various frequencies and at the lower frequencies the range is much far, much longer and this range actually is very much the kind of range we might need in places like rural areas so that part is the uh, is absolutely right uh-huh. but however the other part is about the business case now this business case as we have also uh, spoken earlier the business case is only now emerging and it is emerging in niche businesses niche areas niche uh, geographic locations niche industries and so on and so forth so that is where the digital divide as we are calling it uh, uh, will pose a different kind of a challenge okay so uh, yes i think the there is there are two things which are very uh, clear and which is what i think general coacher is also saying one that there is 5g technology deployable in rural areas second that in the medium term uh, rural areas also have enough applications enough need for bandwidth 
to do many things that will be actually done best with 5G kind of frequency, 5G kind of bandwidth. So that part uh, is taken care, uh, is, uh, is understood. Now mm -hmm. the point about the, uh, what can the government do? You see, uh, the, as we said, the technology is struggling with business case. And what the government can do is help improve that business case. And that business case, the government has virtually no control over the price of equipment. It has no real control over the cost of manpower or uh, staffing. Mm -hmm. It has very little control on what consumers can pay or not pay. But what it does have control over is the inputs. And one of the key inputs is spectrum. Now, the spectrum uh, price is one important role, uh, uh, the important element of the business case for 5G. Okay. If the government can bring down spectrum char prices in a creative way, remember we have two or three uh, things that we have to watch. One is that we uh, are obliged by law now to auction the spectrum. Right, there is no running away from the auction. But what we do have a flexibility in is the design of this auction. And this design of auction can actually have major implications for the kind of bids that will eventually come from the bidders. Mm -hmm. And the government has full control over the design, even though it will eventually be an auction, but the uh, how they design it will determine whether the price people pay is X or 6X or 10X or 100X. Indeed. So I think that is where uh, the role of government comes in. And the government now, I think, recognizes this because it has had two failed auctions in recent times. Those auctions have failed to, uh, to attract any bids in what seems to be uh, 5G spectrum, for example, in 700 megahertz, which, as again we refer to briefly, is spectrum of direct interest to rural areas. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and of course, many other parts of spectrum, like the high frequency millimeter waves, et cetera, which we, yet, which we are yet to auction. But okay. the current pro uh, proposals for the reserve price seem to suggest that unless they are changed, uh, we are going to have a very serious problem uh, conducting a successful auction. And if we do, we would have added a very high upfront cost to the, co uh, to, uh, to the price of, uh, or to the cost of providing 5G services, okay. which I think will be, a, uh, will be a shame if we do that. It will be unfortunate if we do that. Okay. Obviously, you know, uh, what, what you're pointing out here is that it, it has to be viable for uh, uh, the, you know, the operators, telecom operators as well, in turn, for it to become beneficial and viable for the consumers as well. And uh, I'm pretty sure when uh, uh, the time comes and uh, they, these are policy issues, which will be discussed in detail in the government as well, all aspects will be taken care of. But let me also bring in General Kocha here. General Kocha, from industry's point of view, this is a very important point, which is... Uh, which has been raised by Dr. Uppal here in terms of uh, the issue of spectrum pricing one. And there's a lot of activity happening, uh, you know, in, in the telecom industry as well. Uh, uh, there are big players uh, joining forces together and, you know, a lot of push is being made in, in the field trial uh, process itself. Yeah. So the, my take on this is uh, that ultimately all telecom operators aim is to give uh, uh, very affordable and very, uh, a mature service to the populace. That is the aim of the government as well as the uh, aim of the telcos. Mm -hmm. To achieve that, we, we must look at the environment in uh, two or three different ways. One, like Dr. Opal said, short term. Short term, there are no business cases uh, which are emerging which, uh, which can give a return on investment, right, world over. And we, do, we cannot ape the West or Indian condition because uh, uh, driverless cars, good, we will talk about it, but is it feasible in India? I, I have my own thoughts on that. But question is, there are many other applications which are India specific, and that is what will come out during the trials. Mm -hmm. right? In the short term, we have to lay down robust networks which last and which deliver the service that they are intended to deliver. And they are not run-of-the-mill networks because the officers have had to 
spend uh, too much of money so the type of networks which come up are not of the standard that is required okay that that should be guarded again government must look at the deployment of 5g in different with different eyes than what they did for 4g 3g 2g in 4g 3g 2g they were getting only one type of revenue and that revenue was from the telco by by way of either the uh, auctioning or earlier by way of license mm-hmm. uh, but in 5g we must look at like i said two types of revenue one is primary revenue which which they've been getting so far and the second is the secondary revenue the telecom network is going to generate from other industries which are going to improve their efficiencies improve their throughputs improve their revenues because of telecom but that is grossly going to exceed any notional losses the government may have by even foregoing the entire amount of the primary revenue okay so they have to look at it from that point of view they have to do an exercise maybe they can have uh, uh, somebody some experts sit together like dr upul who can then bring out statistically that this is the amount of revenue you are going to get what are you talking about peanuts don't miss the woods for the trees so support the telecom industry to roll out networks mm-hmm. which are sustainable which are good which are affordable for the public so that the public gets starts getting uh, uh, cheaper services better services and yet the government offers uh, increase their net input okay. so that is the manner in which they have to look at okay, okay. so i agree 100% with dr opal that uh, government has to look at it with different lenses and see that uh, the, the enablement happens for the telecom industry okay okay i'm pretty sure all those uh, points will be uh, taken on board uh, by uh, the policy makers uh, there as well but one question quick question to both of you before we bring this discussion to an end and that is something which uh, uh, you know uh, Uh, the common man the layman wants to know uh, sort of you know get an idea actually as in how long it might take uh, before we actually see 5g roll out happening the technology in practical use there the telcos both telcos have gone on record in the last few days that they will be ready with their networks by january february 22 so it's not it's not going to go too far away after the trial period is over and uh, between these two uh dates i suppose auctions will take place and uh, things will happen in that manner so it's not it's not going to be long but the point which is important and which uh, dr opal was uh, alluding to mm-hmm. is how can a subscriber in the rural area and because he is the worst place uh, how can he afford 5g indeed so uh, there are two types of cost one is the network cost and the second is the subscriber cost subscriber cost means a handset he should he should it should not happen that he has to buy a new handset which is expensive to get onto the 5g network and he he is not going to earn too much out of uh, a 5g connection so why the hell should he pay extra money to buy a handset that has to be taken care of and that can be taken care of in two ways one is building okay. a vanilla network and the second way uh, which uh, uh, which has been announced by one of our because yes yes they Okay. and the second thing is uh, uh economies of scale if you go as per international standards you will get handsets which are cheaper to manufacture rather than making handsets only for india okay so that okay. that is another important aspect indeed indeed it is uh, an important aspect out there uh, dr upal your quick concluding comment on the timeline sir uh, what are expectations in terms of uh, you know the the roll out on the ground of uh, 5g technologies that's right you see so uh, general coacher is absolutely right i think our uh, operators are working uh, on the technology part of it while the government is trying to uh, set a date for the auction and the mm-hmm. chances are that they can be off the ground quite soon after the auction is uh, carried out or successfully completed however i think like the point we started with and it's only fair that we end with that that the the actual roll out will be both in in a different form from the one that we have seen in 4g it will be niche it will be in specific islands and i think for a nationwide roll out we may have to wait much more than uh, that and i would put it that maybe at least it'll be at least one more year after we start 5g services before we can expect a near you uni- uh, know nationwide network okay. near and that also that also 
uh, is, I say, with several reservations because it is both a, a cost issue, a business case issue, and, and a device issue, as General Kocher also mentioned. Okay. So we have to be realistic about our expectations. Okay, there it is. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mahesh Uppal and uh, uh, Lieutenant General Kocher as well for sharing your views and insights on this very important aspect uh, regards to 5G technologies. And uh, as our experts were pointing out, there are uh, quite a few challenges, uh, but a lot of opportunities there as well. And we'll have to wait and watch as to what the government's final policy uh, on the rollout and the spectrum pricing will be and how will the industry move ahead? How will the telecom service operators move ahead in terms of ensuring that uh, the benefits of uh, 5G technology are equally percolated uh, in both urban and rural areas as well? We'll come back again. Till then, keep watching. Thank you.